All right. Hey, everyone. This is Dr. Paul Martin with uh, Brilliant Life Chiropractic. And uh, to follow up on my uh, video from last time where I talked about proper lifting technique, I thought I would talk a little bit about the importance of squatting. Because uh, I brought it up a little bit last time, but I didn't actually go into too much about uh, what proper squatting was even. Um, squatting is one of the oldest movements that we that we should do. And we've actually lost in our society. And part of this is because we have such a uh, so many chairs around and we sit so much that um, we've lost the ability to squat. And squatting is one of the best exercises you can do for your lower body and your lower back uh, and keeping all of those things functional. The squat can be a total body exercise, uh, except for maybe the arms, um, but it, it's hugely important and it's a movement that we've lost. Uh, sitting tends to shorten your hip flexors tends to um, create a poor posture for the lower back, whereas if you squat down and you develop that really strongly, your knees get stronger, your hips get stronger, your lower back gets stronger, your pelvic floor gets stronger. Uh, it's great, and so I wanna talk a little bit more about that. You know, my background is in personal training before I became a chiropractor, and uh, I was teaching people how to squat completely incorrectly. Well, maybe not completely, but uh, I didn't take it far enough. Um, the important things to do uh, with squatting, I'm going to go into. Uh, when I was younger, I had a whole lot of knee issues. I had Osgood Schlatter's disease when I was young, and um, that's an inflammation of the tibial tuberosity in the knee. And so I had lots of pain, took lots of ibuprofen, and I had weak knees after that. And looking at my dad, my dad also had pretty weak knees, and I thought, well, this is just genetic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have weak knees when I grow up. And um, no, it, I've, I've actually managed to work my way around that. And uh, uh, I believe that you can too. You just have to do it the right way. And so I'm going to share that with you. Um, you know, I saw a number of different specialists. Uh, we tried to train imbalanced muscles uh, in my legs, um, trying to make the quads work a little differently. And uh, nothing really worked to help my knees feel better until I developed a really deep, really strong, solid squat. And now my knees are much stronger than they ever used to be. Uh, I can squat down on one leg uh, because I've worked it so much uh, and I've gotten so good at that. So um, here are my tips for a good, healthy squat. Uh, number one, you wanna stand with your feet a comfortable distance apart. Um, you'll sometimes hear people tell you that, that the feet should be parallel to each other, or they should only be hip width apart, uh, and they shouldn't go any further than that. I disagree with this. I think every body is made differently, and if you look at how even Olympic lifters tend to lift, um, they don't follow a, a one-size-fits-all type paradigm. Every lifter lifts a little bit differently. Uh, one thing I heard about where to find a good foot position for your squat is to just take a little jump and then look down at your feet and see how they land. Um, the way my feet go when I do this is uh, they're a little wider than hip width and their toes are pointed out. And that's what you want. You actually want those toes to point out and I'm gonna talk about that. Um, so usually that's about shoulder width, but maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. See how it falls for you. Um, toes should point out a little bit. Uh, as the femurs, the leg bones, you know, as your feet go a little wider, your legs will also go a little wider. And then as you squat down, those knees are going to want to point out, and they should point out and go along with your feet. Um, they, should, they should match that direction within reason. A little bit of torque in and out is okay, um, but it shouldn't be extreme. This is one of the reasons you don't want your feet to point straight forward, uh, because then that puts an undue amount of torque through uh, the tibia, which is the, the main lower leg bone. Third, maintain a neutral spine. Now, I'm not talking about crazy extension. Uh, extension is when you're arching backward, okay? Flexion is forward and extension is backward. Um, you want to maintain a neutral spine as well as you can. So it's gonna require that you keep your core tight. Uh, but neutral is what you're looking for, okay? Uh, you don't need to stick your butt way out behind you or anything like that if you, just, if you can just squat down. Number four, this is as you progress through the squat, work on depth while keeping yourself mostly upright, okay? You will bend forward a little bit. That is normal and natural as your hips go backwards a little bit. Uh, as your knees bend, your hips will go backwards and then your upper body will have to come forward just a little bit. Keep your core tight, keep that back, back straight. And then eventually just sort of work your way down with the depth. Um, and I'm advocating no weight with these squats as you're learning, okay? Uh, how much you have to bend forward will depend on your anatomy, your hip flexibility, your mobility, where you're at right then, and, and, and it will improve over time. And everybody has limitations based on that anatomy. Some people have hips that just, the bony structures are such that they won't move in a particular way. That's fine. You won't be able to push through that. Uh, other people, it's more of a soft tissue issue, and then it's a good idea to try and work with that so that you can get better. Um, so, 
Oh, and if you're using weight, uh, there are many different kinds of squats you can do with that. I'm talking about no weight here, but if you're doing a front squat, you're going to be more upright because of the, where the bar is located. If you're doing a back squat, you're going to be a little bit more bent forward just because of where the bar is. Okay, uh, five. If you need help with that depth, grab onto something. Uh, a bar works very well, like a bar that's upright in the ground, like a pole. Uh, also a door frame. If you um, grab the frame, you can kind of grip it with your fingers and you can use that to help you lower yourself down. Um, and this is the thing that got lost when I was a personal trainer. This is the key component. You want to bend your knees. You want to get your hips down below the angle of your knees, ideally, eventually. Maybe not when you're first starting to do this because your knees hurt. Trust me, if you work on this without pushing it too hard, you can work on that mobility and this is how your knees can get stronger. When I first started doing this 10 years ago, my knees would not let me. Okay, my knees were just like, what the heck are you trying to do? Uh, my first squats were going to 90 degrees in the knees and that was it. Um, uh, working on the depth will help your knees become much stronger. So a door frame is really helpful for that. Uh, again, I would start with no weight um, until this is comfortable. And then you can add weight if you want, but there's really no need to ever do that. I like squatting with weight because I'm into that sort of thing for my exercise needs and wants mostly, um, but you don't need to. You can squat with no weight and still get a fantastic workout, okay? Um, so if you have any other questions uh, about squats, feel free to reach out. If you like the content, please uh, like and subscribe and um, make sure to visit the brilliantlifechiropractic.com and we also have a Facebook page for with more healthy tips and blog posts. Um, remember that uh, you deserve a brilliant life. Let it shine.